in the process of looking at the saints and blessed couples who really have attained that high bar of Catholic, of a Catholic marriage. And um, we want them to journey with us to help us, if we are called to this vocation, to do the same. So let's take a look at Mary and Joseph, right? The incarnation is always, we've always got to start there. We start with Christ, frankly. And then we can move out to more of the contemporary saints. So, St. Joseph from Matthew's genealogy, Matthew 1, 18 to 24, we see him saying yes to an angel in a dream. We see he has a free will, they're one of the four Fs, right? He too had a fiat, let it be done to me. But let's back up a little bit. And... So for the sourcing for St. Joseph, I will um, turn to, in great part, the Proto-Evangelium of James. And um, this book we're going to use for quite a bit <laughs> is Ferdinand Holbrook's, so we can see it, Married Saints and Blessed Through the Centuries. Ignatius Press, and he does a delightful job of um, summarizing some of these points from the Proto-Evangelium. The church holds this document in high regard, but it's obviously not in the canon, and it bears repeating the reason it wasn't in the canon is because it, there was no evidence of its use in liturgy, and that in and of itself tells us about the teaching role, I mean, it tells us a lot about what the church thinks of the liturgy. One aspect being that it, she is a teacher. She's a teacher. Right. So let's continue down this uh, this path. And when we start to have speculation, I'll I'll be real clear about that. So Mary, all right. So we're here. Here it is. So here's the speculation. Mary has taken a vow of virginity. Otherwise, why would she be surprised that she's going, you know, she if she's betrothed to Joseph, but before they have come together, um, why does it come as a surprise to her? She's going to have a child unless she's already done that. So you can, there's a, that speculation, but I think that that's a pretty solid one. Mm -hmm. um, we Joseph is a widower, a widower, that is another speculation. Right. So the brothers of Joseph could have been uh, cousins or perhaps prior mar marriage, but I'm not so sure about that. Some people, some scholars will say something like that. I always wonder what there's why. What what other things do they speculate on when I hear that? Yes, that's right. That's right. So the betrothal was a step before marriage. So it's much more than just being engaged. Oh yes. And, uh, for her to be with child during that time isn't the same as being with child if one were engaged. Mm -hmm. Joseph was her true husband. Right. So here is where I start to think, this is my opinion of what has transpired and um, perhaps for Ferdinand thinks the same thing, is that Mary wouldn't have kept secrets. Mm -hmm. And his unwillingness to take our lady is it because of shame or her being you know pregnant some i think it's because he realizes how unworthy he is to be the father of the messiah and that's at the root of his um reluctance to take our lady and our blessed lord into his home Right. And I, I, I would just go along with that, that, I mean, it's my pious speculation also, yeah. is that um, it was always known that he was going to, that the Messiah was going to be born of a virgin, right, who, who would remain a virgin. And so I've often thought that maybe Joseph also felt that in some manner by his presence, people would speculate that she was not. And so as a way sort of to preserve that reality that she was going to, that the Messiah would be born of a virgin, that he would 
divorce her quietly so that that she would become the mother of God, right? I mean, because uh, it said, I mean, it was going to be a virgin birth. Anyway, sorry, I digress. But, you know, I, I've always wondered, you know, um, because there's a really interesting thing where they, they, you know, when when that when the angel of the Lord comes, you know, we we call when Mary's when when Gabriel comes to Mary, we call that the Annunciation, right? And Mary asks a question, right? Mary says, "How can this be? Because I don't know man." Right? She's she, there's a there's a question that she proposes, but no one ever calls the Annunciation Mary's doubt, right? But the same thing. So one could say that the angel, when he appeared to Joseph too, that that was not Joseph's doubt per se, but that was also an annunciation to Joseph in the sense that both of them had questions about how could this be, right? I mean, what is going to happen here? But it's interesting that we described that we don't ascribe the same level of, I don't know, like a, a maleficent doubt. I, I mean, I don't think that we really do in the sense because we recognize Joseph as a saint, but that there would have been doubts about her integrity. You know, that that is an entering, that's a point that enters in. I, I I don't know where that comes from. I think that that's a later addition to to the story because what we know about that story obviously would have been recounted to St. Luke by the Blessed Mother herself. That's right. That's right. That's right. He was the, uh, they had an intimate conversation. Right. So St. Joseph truly is, of course, protector of the church because our lady and the blessed Lord, right, is where the church is going to spring from. And also, it, Sarah, you were so gifted to bring up the, uh, the concept of communion of saints and personal witness. And for us, me and my, our family, we have personally uh, engaged with the consecration to St. Joseph. Right, yes. And so I just bring this to y'all's attention the consecration to saint joseph by uh the wonders of our spiritual father by uh father calloway yeah it's a really beautiful it is, book it is beautiful yeah. and um once it was brought to our understanding uh of the tremendous uh help and resource saint joseph was it just seemed so natural to uh consecrate ourselves to him as we had done prior to the sacred heart and the immaculate heart of our lady right. so i give that to you as a consideration and in terms of your walk together with your spouse towards this high bar of uh, attaining catholic marriage right. so the annunciation to joseph um jesus Christ. It's a personal name is Jesus, Jesus, Yahweh, plus a royal title of Christ, anointed uh, king. So, so, and as mentioned prior, the marriage process was two step, a betrothal, and then the coming together. They were legally married at the betrothal. Mm -hmm. um, so, when Our Lady is with child by the Holy Spirit, she would have been subject to stoning for adultery yes. because she would have been considered uh, married. And as Romans ruled, public divorce and public trials were standard practice at that time. So this reverential fear. Okay, so these are the three choices. Different scholars fall into different categories. To avoid shame, uh, divorce quietly, mercy observing the law. Even if non-consensual, so number two, Mary still unfit for marriage, again, quietly dismissing her. But this reverential fear goes back Aquinas, Bernard, Basil. Basil would be about the 500s. Basil is regarded in the Orthodox community as well. And Ephraim, Ephraim, Ephraim. And that is also a very ancient source. And that's where Joseph has a holy fear of unworthy honor. Right. Um, so with Joseph, Jesus will have a royal lineage, lineage because he has full and complete hereditary rights of David. He mm -hmm. um, will save his people from their sins. It's forgiveness because Joshua in Old Test Testament Yah means Yahweh is salvation. So there's salvific, there's kingdom. 
Um, and I, I, I think that it bears um, an important, uh, that we should make note of the modernist who wants to pretend that the Blessed Mother was an unwed mother. Um, I, it's, I mean, if they, if they were not married, why would he need to divorce her? I mean, it seems to be a pretty, a, <laughs> you know, a, a pretty obvious fact. Um, but it is, uh, it's a, it's a, a bit of a sinister attempt to, to demean or to diminish the, the reality of the goodness of the situation into which our Lord entered into the world. There is not one bit of illegitimacy that can be put upon the shoulders of, of Joseph and Mary, right? This, this union that they had affected between the two of them was a pious and holy and worthy relationship. I mean, in terms of like the the, the teachings of, of the Judaic religion at that point, the betrothal was essentially a marriage in all things except for residence at that point. And the recognition of this probably would have been that it would have not been given Mary's age. I don't know. There probably is some element of the law that would have proscribed her from being in like the physical presence of Joseph. Although at this point, I, I believe that there was also speculation that Mary and Jo, I mean, uh, that Anne and Joachim at this point may no longer be um, alive at this point, right? I mean, because right. the, the story that you had said about um, the, the, that pious little meeting of Anne and Joachim, that he would have been 70 in his 71st year when, uh, when our, our lady was conceived. And, and um, we have to presume that. Uh, that Anne would have, Anne may have still been alive, but Joachim would not have been alive. And so consequently, what they would have done is they would have put her, her under the protection of her husband and given to him in betrothal so that she would always have been taken care of, is, would be the presumptive pious belief on this, but that she was not yet old enough to be released into his custody, shall we say, right? That she would have still been being raised probably with her mother in the temple at that point. Um, that, that we really must have a belief that 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 our Lord, in in bestowing upon Jesus in His human nature uh, a, a human family, that He did that in a manner that had the highest level of integrity and justice and goodness involved in it. That's right. That's right. All right, my friends. Now we're going to take a turn to. Uh, Monica and Patricius, um, the parents of Augustine in the next episode. Till then, my friends, be days. Okay.